Hi guys, welcome back to Shina's Kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make mandazi. And the mandazi we're going to be making today are mandazi with lemon in them. So I have some lemon here, we're going to be using the lemon zest. Mandazi are very popular here in Kenya, so they're like a snack you have with tea like for breakfast or for afternoon. So to get started with our mandazi, we're going to go ahead and get some flour. So get your flour and pour it into a bowl. I'm using self-raising flour. You can also use white flour if you don't have self-raising flour and then just mix with about one teaspoon to one cup of flour. So usually I like to beat my flour at this stage to remove any lumps in it. So by beating in the flour, uh, what that does is basically aerate the flour, making it nice and light. So once I've done that, I normally go ahead and add my margarine or butter or oil. But I'm using margarine, but you can use any of the ones that I've mentioned. So once you've added your margarine to the flour, go ahead and start mixing it in with your hands. So basically you're rubbing it until it's well mixed with the flour. So just continue rubbing the flour and the margarine until it's well mixed. Uh, it should look kind of like a little breadcrumbs with some spots in them. So like the flour looks like it has some lumps in them. So create a well and then in the well I'm going to go ahead and add some sugar, some salt and then I'm going to zest some lemons. So for the lemon you want to make sure you don't go all the way to the white part. So you're only zesting the skin only because the white part tends to be bitter. So add some vanilla essence and then add some water to the center. I like mixing my dough from the center with some warm water. That's where the sugar dissolves as you're adding in the water. And then you start folding in the flour from the sides before using your hands. So once the dough starts to pull in together, as you can see it, it's time to now use your hands. So I usually go ahead and now start mixing in my dough because now it's come together and then start to knead it. So once the dough has come together from the bowl, as you can see it, so it's time to now start kneading it, like seriously kneading it. So get some flour on the surface and then add your dough and start kneading it. And for me, my technique for kneading the dough is usually I like to use my palm, the base of my palm, and then I just work the dough out, stretching it out and then inwards. So out and then inwards. And you're going to continue mixing the dough until it's nice and stretchy. At this rate, when you look at it, uh, it's not yet where you want it because it's still like breaking. So you want to mix it until the gluten has activated and it's nice and elastic. So I've kneaded the dough now for like about 10 minutes. And if you look at it, you'll notice the dough is now stretchy. So usually at this stage, I like to leave it to rest. And if you need your dough right, you'll notice that um, the gluten has been activated and that's like the protein that's inside the flour that allows your flour, your dough to be nice and elastic and stretchy. So you want to make sure that you need your dough for like a long time so that when you leave it to rest, you only leave it for like about 10 minutes or so. And then that way you can go ahead and start rolling it to make your mandazis. So you'll know your dough is well kneaded because it's going to just be like a ball. It just rolls out your hand and you don't get anything sticky. It just rolls off nice and easy as you're tucking in. Right now I'm tucking in the bottom so that I can create a nice ball like that. So I'm going to put the ball into a bowl and then I usually like to use the same bowl. And so that nothing sticks, I like to add a bit of oil in the bowl and then just grease the bowl and then now add my dough. So once you grease the bottom of the bowl you're going to use, get your dough and just lightly grease it using the same oil really. And then add your dough and cover it with some cling film or a dish cloth. I like using cling film and make sure you cover with a cling film directly onto the dough and not above. When you cover above, it will get a crust and your dough will become hard. So you want to make sure you cover directly into the dough. And making sure there is no air spaces 
after you've covered your dough. So it's literally holding the dough. So once you've added your cling film to the dough, I usually like to take it up under step and add a warm dishcloth on top of it. I feel like it helps um, activate my gluten like a lot faster and make my dough nice and elastic like a lot faster. But I don't know whether it's just me. So you could just leave it with the cling film or just add a damp cloth on top, a warm damp cloth on top. So our dough has had some time to rest. It's been about 10 minutes. So I'm going to take it out of the wall and start kneading it. If you have a look now, you'll notice that our dough is really nice and soft and really, really elastic. The gluten has had time to do its work. So at this point, I'm just going to divide my dough so I can start making my mandazis. So I like to divide it into balls. So I'm going to make about four balls. And I'm just eyeballing it here with my hands. Although an easy technique, actually, what you could do is roll out the dough. So once you've rolled it, then you could go ahead and just divide your dough. This is an easy way for you to get like exact measurements instead of getting it out of the bowl. And then for the balls, I'm not using, I'm going to put them aside and cover them. So get it into a nice ball and then flatten it. And then now start rolling it out. And for mandazis, you don't want the dough to be very thin, so you still want it to be a bit thick. So I've rolled out my dough to the thickness I want it. I don't want it very thin, and I don't want it very thick. I don't like my mandazis um, very fleshy. So I'm going to now go ahead and cut this into triangles. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and now cut this into like a triangular shape. And to do that, just cut the circle into half and then into quarter. And then go ahead now and deep fry your dough. To find out if your oil is uh, hot, usually one of the things you can do is add some water into the oil. Although that sometimes can be dangerous. The other method you can use is add some flour into the oil. And you'll notice once it starts to bubble and dissolve, then the oil is hot enough. So go ahead and add your mandazis to the oil now that your oil is hot and they should bubble gently then use a spoon to just flush some extra oil to the top this will just help them raise even more And then go ahead and turn your mandazis once they start to brown. So you want to make sure your oil is not very hot that they burn. So they're just going to turn nice and golden brown. So usually the mandazis don't take long to cook. Um, as you can see, mine have all turned nice and golden brown and my oil is not that hot. Like it's hot, but it's not to the point that it's burning them. You want to make sure, like I've said, that the oil is hot, but still hot to be able to cook them through and not burn. So I'm going to go ahead now and take out my mandazis. And the spoon I'm using is just one that has holes so that you can take out the excess oil. And also something that I like to do sometimes is when I've made my mandazi dough, is actually just wrap it with a um, clean film and then just put it in the fridge, like refrigerate it and make it later, it will actually be fine. We can actually also freeze the dough. When you put it into the freezer, you want to make sure that you defrost it ahead of time so that the dough gets time to come to room temperature before you actually start to make it. So that's a good tip for you if you want to make mandazis and you can make them ahead of time because you have already made the dough. Once your mandazis are ready, go ahead and uh, sprinkle some icing sugar on them. This is totally optional, you don't have to do this. In Kenya, we actually have our mandazis without the icing sugar. I like to go the extra mile and make them look all pretty and delicious. So our mandazis are ready and I'm having them with a cup of coffee. I love my coffee. 
so I'm going to get a big bite of my mentos because they look so pretty, but I can't eat it. They're really big food, and I'm so proud of my food. So your mandazis should be nice, light and airy and when you look through you'll see they have enough flesh to them as well as some hollow bits. So that's how I like my mandazis to a good ratio to them, the hollow part and the flesh part. Mm. The lemon in this, it really comes through and when you add the tasty sugar on top, gives it a nice sweetness, just an extra sweetness at the top. This is so good. So there is no better way to have my dazis than with tea. And I mentioned I love to have mine with coffee. So if you are from Kenya, you can definitely try my recipe, my mandazis with lemon in them. And also my mandazis were also vegan friendly. They do not have eggs, they do not have dairy with them. So you can definitely try them if you're vegan. So if you guys really enjoyed this recipe, my Kenyan mandazis with lemon with them, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And for more delicious recipes like this, comment down below and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, bye!